Hi, I'm Newt from FFL Paintball, and you're watching Nightmare PB. Hey everyone, it's Nightmare here. Today, I'm bringing to you one of my most requested videos since becoming a YouTuber, and that is how to make the Takamo MKP2 First Strike compatible. Now, the only thing you're really gonna need to do is, well, first off, start off with modding your bolt, and I'm gonna show you how to do that today. The second thing you're gonna need is a set of First Strike springs, which you can buy at Rap4 Canada or Rap4 USA. These will be a crucial part of the mod. You will need these inside of your DMAGs in order to load the first strike rounds properly into the marker. Now, the reason why the Phenom bolt, the stock bolt, cannot fire first strike rounds properly is because of this flat edge. This flat edge is gonna clip your first strikes as they're coming up into the marker. As they're loading up from your magazine into your marker, the first one will fire no problem. But what happens is as the bolt slides forward, the second round, the second first strike round in the magazine is going to get clipped by the face of the bolt. The face of the bolt is going to clip it and it's either going to do one of two things. It's going to either break the fin completely off or just flip them the round backwards in the magazine. Either way, you're going to have a bad day if that does happen. So the only way to prevent this is to actually taper the bolt just slightly enough that when you fire the second first strike round in the magazine will not get touched. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is grab your bolt and get yourself a scriber. Uh, these can be picked up from the dollar store. I mean uh, it came in a dent little dentist kit. Everybody should have one. It's great for taking off any O-rings, replacing O-rings, uh, whatever the case is. Everybody should have one in their gear bag at least. Now what you're going to do is carefully go underneath this O-ring. There's a little small black O-ring. You're going to get underneath that. Oh, careful not to uh, damage your, uh, your O-ring here. But you're going to get up underneath it, just like so, and pull your O-ring right off. Take your O-ring set it aside. Now as you can see here there's no o-ring on this bolt anymore. Uh, completely bare and this is where the fun begins. Um, all you're going to need to do from this point on is literally grab your Dremel or even a table sander if you have one and taper the edge of this bolt right, right here about 45 degrees all the way around. Right now you get about a, a 90 degree bend from the face of the bolt to the side and you're just going to want to taper that just slightly using of course your Dremel. Now honestly all you have to do is take your bolt and at a 45 degree angle you're just going to sand it all the way around nice and smoothly rotating nice and slowly you don't have to have a super high speed you're going to want to have control over this I mean you don't, you don't want to be damaging your bolt to the point where you're going to want to buy a second one uh, you're going to want to smooth it out when you're done. Uh, you don't want any sharp burrs, any edges, nothing that's going to you know, do any damage inside your marker. After all, this is a piece of equipment that's going back and forth at a high rate of speed. So, you know, take your time on it. You're going to sand it down, like I said, nice 45 degree angle all the way around. And when you're done, you should have a product that looks similar to this one. As you can see, I already have my nice uh, 45 degree angle edge here. It's tapered down. It's not much more than the, the original. If you look at the original and you look at this modded one, there's not much of a difference. I've taken a tiniest amount off of it. Uh, like you can see right here, 45 degrees all the way around. It's nice and smooth. I give it a nice, uh, nice finish. Uh, on this side, you can see I kind of nicked the bottom here, you know, got a little out of hand but I mean honestly it's not a hard mod to do and that's only going to be step one of getting your Phenom slash MKP1 or 2 
ready for first strike rounds. Now, on to step two, DMAG. You're gonna need to modify your DMAGs for first strike use. These springs are not uh, stiff enough to properly load the first strikes into the marker. You're going to want to remove these springs, the stock springs, and replace them with these aftermarket RAP4 designed first strike springs. So these here are the RAP4 20 round shaped projectile springs. Uh, they don't run very much, you're looking at about 3 or 4 dollars per tube of two springs, two springs, DMAG, you know, one pack, one tube will do, one mag. Honestly, you've got these two tabs, one here, one here, you flick these tabs open, the, these, this back end here will separate into two, separate right in half, one left, one right, and your springs are going to pop right out. Let me demonstrate that for you. So using your flathead screwdriver, you pop one side, pop the other side, and sometimes you gotta go back and forth between the two of them, because some of them do like to go back on each other. Like that one just did there. And it's just a matter of getting these tabs up and getting them to stay up. This one seems to be wanting to be a little more difficult, but there we go. Just like that. All right, so let's just uh, see what happens. Yeah, let's clear up some of this clutter. So we have our two halves of the bottom of the magazine. The plate that actually holds the springs in place and our springs. So you're gonna take these two springs, pull them right out. Toss them to the side, we're not gonna need those anymore. We bring in our nice heavy duty shaped projectile 20 round springs and you literally just load them in where the old springs were. You then take your end cap, you're going to place those your springs into that and just close down and already I can feel the different tension in these springs. They are a much uh, tougher spring, they don't uh, squeeze together as nicely as the old springs and then literally from here on in you are going to just slide your two halves back together just like that give the, your tabs a good press on each side there and there and there you have it you have a now converted much tougher spring for your first strike rounds. And at that point, that's all you have to do really. I would recommend getting a lock bolt. Uh, honestly, if you do for whatever reason have a round that doesn't seat properly, you're gonna want that lock bolt there. It's gonna stop your bolt from sliding float forward and you know causing a huge mess inside the marker. You know, if you have a breech break with a first strike, the fill is much thicker than your standard paint and it is going to be a little trickier to clean out but other than that that's all you have to do all right so that's it for me today uh, if you have any questions at all about the mkp and the first strike mod leave a question down below in the comments i will get back to you as soon as i can um, i really want to see more people with mkps using first strike rounds i mean it is a great time i do have a video where i did use standard paint and first strikes in the same game uh, i'll leave a link to that video in the description below i'll also leave a link in the description below for spare phenom stock bolts and a link to where you can get your hands on some 20 round shaped projectile dmag springs have yourselves a great day and i'll see you guys on the field Hey, you made it to the end of the video. Fantastic. If you want to see some more videos, I have my last video posted there on the right hand side and I've got my gear reviews posted on the left hand side. Also, if you want to keep up to date with me and my YouTube channel, you can hit that big red subscribe button below and you can also follow me on my social media outlets which are linked there on the left hand side. Thanks for watching. See you guys next week. Peace.